Aloha, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain and maintain optimum health. Today, we're gonna to talk about estrogen, the microbiome, and breast cancer. It's hard to believe that all of these are interrelated, but they absolutely are. And we're gonna spend some time reviewing the mechanics behind this. As always, the references to the science and the studies I'm about to discuss are in the video description below. So if you're really interested, you can read the actual papers for yourself. Let's take a quick minute to discuss breast cancer. It remains the most common form of cancer in the United States. It makes up nearly 30% of all cancer diagnoses. In 2020 alone, nearly 260,000 women in the U.S. will receive a diagnosis of breast cancer, and more than 40,000 will die due to the disease. Since the early 2000s, the role of the human gut microbiome and how it relates to breast cancer has become a major area of interest, and it's become one of the frontiers of breast cancer research. If you want more general information on the microbiome, I've linked some videos below where I discuss the topic in great detail. To summarize this absolutely fascinating topic, we as humans are not merely individuals. We're not made up of human cells only. We are a complex ecosystem that harbors hundreds of trillions of microbial cells like bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa. Most of them, a hundred trillion of them, live in the GI tract. Collectively, these organisms have a genome that is 150 times larger than the human genome. The microbiome is undoubtedly the second genome of the human body, and we're finding out it has an important and diverse role in both human health and disease. When the gut microbiome operates optimally, it provides valuable services like energy production through the fermentation of foods, synthesis of vitamins, building of amino acids, general oversight of the immune system. This all in all, it just keeps chronic conditions at bay and it prevents development of disease. The microbiota are so important in fact that many researchers now consider it an essential organ. So let's switch gears. How does the microbiome relate to breast cancer? Breast cancer is a complex disease with many factors that lead to its development. It would be overly simplistic to think that one thing alone is solely responsible for this disease. There are some factors that, without a doubt, contribute though. There are genetic factors, things like BRCA1 and 2 gene mutations. These account for about 10% of all breast cancer cases. Then there's environmental risk factors that strongly correlate with breast cancer development. Things like sedentary lifestyle, obesity, excessive alcohol use, and hormone replacement therapy. Then there's the factors that are a little less clear, the things we're slowly finding more and more about, things like the microbiome. I can't wait to share the mechanism of the microbiome in relation to breast cancer formation, but first we have to talk about the mechanism of breast cancer. So bear with me, I can assure you we will circle back to the microbiome shortly. When we look at breast cancers overall, about 70% of them, so the majority of them are a subtype called estrogen receptor positive or ER positive. This means the breast cancer cells feed off of estrogen. Most of these ER positive breast cancers occur in postmenopausal women. When a woman is postmenopausal, her estrogen mainly comes from adipose tissue or fat and by breakdown of other hormone precursors. Compare that with a premenopausal woman her estrogen is made in the ovaries. Let's briefly review estrogen metabolism because it's important. Estrogen circulates in our bloodstream until it passes through the liver where it's conjugated or metabolized. This allows it to be excreted in the bile which ultimately dumps into our GI tract. Once it's in the GI tract, it's further broken down and it's excreted in the feces or it's reabsorbed into the circulation. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. In a nutshell, Regulation of estrogen levels in the body is largely dependent on the microbiome. There are bacterial genes in the GI tract that metabolize estrogens. They actually break them down. Other bacteria prevent breakdown and they allow the estrogen to get back into the circulation. The regulation of this is super precise and this regulation system is called the estrobolome. So how exactly does it work? And more importantly, why do we care? So bacteria in the GI tract produce an enzyme called beta-glucuronidase. This enzyme acts on the estrogen and it allows it to be reabsorbed into the circulation again and again. 
Once in the bloodstream, estrogen can act on various tissues throughout the body, even on breast tissue and theoretically on breast cancer cells. Granted, not all estrogen is bad. We need estrogen to survive. But too much estrogen, well, that's not a good thing either. Fortunately, the estrobilum tightly regulates estrogen levels, thanks to our gut bacteria. So yes, basically, the bacteria in our gut tightly regulate estrogen levels in our body. They're the ones that make a decision whether estrogen is excreted or whether it's recycled back into the circulation. There's many bacteria that make beta-glucuronidase, that enzyme that breaks down estrogen, but one of the highest producers is that bacteria called Bacteroidetes. So anyone who really researches the microbiome knows that this bacteria, Bacteroidetes, is a marker of a healthy microbiome. Researchers know that microbial dysbiosis or disbalance in the gut microbiome results in production of beta-glucuronidase. This results in less estrogen being broken down and excreted and more estrogen in the circulation. Researchers have shown that a diet that is rich in fat or protein has been associated with higher fecal beta-glucuronidase activity, whereas a diet rich in fiber consumption decreases its activity. So what's the point of all this? Well, a healthy microbiome equals healthy regulation of estrogen levels. Anything that causes a change to the microbiome can affect estrogen regulation. Gut microflora varies with ethnicity, diet, body type, and other factors like history of antibiotic exposure and infections. So the strength of our microbiome likely plays a huge role in driving hormone-dependent cancers like ER-positive breast cancer. There's some evidence of this in the literature. For example, in population-based studies, vegetarians have been found to excrete more conjugated estrogens compared to their non-vegetarian counterparts. In another American study, vegetarian women had three-fold higher levels of conjugated estrogens in their feces, and their plasma or blood estrogen levels were 15 to 20 percent lower compared to the omnivores. They also had lower beta-glucuronidase activity. Another example of something that influences our microbiome and therefore our estrogen levels is alcohol intake. One study done in postmenopausal women demonstrated that alcohol consumption was correlated with significantly higher plasma estrogen levels. Why is this? Well, the theory is that higher alcohol consumption can result in small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, otherwise known as SIBO. This dysbiosis results in an unhealthy microbial profile and less excretion of estrogen. One marker of microbiome health is diversity. The more diversity or different types of bacteria we have in our gut, the healthier the microbiome. One study showed that women that had a more diverse microbial ecosystem in their gut had a higher ratio of estrogen metabolites in their urine, meaning they were excreting more estrogen. One other huge factor in microbiome health is obesity. Obesity alone has been associated with dysbiosis and with higher low-grade inflammation levels in the body. Being in a state of chronic low-grade inflammation can contribute to cancer development and progression. So after all this information, what can we do to optimize our microbiome and make sure our estrobilum is functioning to the best of its ability? Well, we gotta work on fostering the good bacteria, the ones that regulate estrogen excretion and retention. We can do this by working on increasing the diversity of our microbiome. And the main way we do this is by eating fiber and many different types of fiber. Fiber comes from our plant foods, from our fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes. Remember, animal products contain zero fiber, so you won't find any benefit there when it comes to the estrobilum. Oh, and if you wanted to pick that one vegetable, the one solitary vegetable that results in the most estrogen secretion, I bet you'd never guess it. Well, it's the brassica family, like broccoli. So examples of brassica vegetables are broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. In multiple studies looking at postmenopausal women, broccoli has been shown to increase the urinary excretion of estrogen metabolites. How much broccoli do you have to eat to achieve this awesome effect? Well, only one cup per day. Your mother was right, broccoli truly is a superfood. Multiple studies have demonstrated that when it comes to breast cancer, adoption of a healthy lifestyle after a breast cancer diagnosis can decrease mortality rates by up to 50%. This can be accomplished if patients adhere to the adoption of a high fruit and vegetable diet, at least bare minimum four to five servings per day. Then you couple that with regular physical activity, 
30 minutes five times per week. This is all very powerful information. The more we realize that the choices we make in our lifestyle can influence development and recurrence of breast cancer, the more powerful we are and the more empowered we can be to make, you know, small little changes that result in a huge difference. Well, that about wraps it up for today's discussion. I certainly hope you found this information empowering, useful, and practical. Links to the references used in this video, they're in the video description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna show us some real support, subscribe. We love hearing from you, so please comment below with your thoughts on the video, good questions, or anything you just wanna know more about. Thanks for watching, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and aloha.